Hey, Beach Hunter here. Uh, I'm in Cocoa Beach this weekend uh, attending the 14th annual International Sea Bean Symposium and Beachcombers Festival, which is held at the Cocoa Beach Public Library every October. Dr. Curtis Ebbesmeyer, uh, author of his new book, Flotsometrics is also in attendance, and I was fortunate enough to be able to sit down with him and have an interview uh, talking about his new book, and here's what he had to say. Um, Dr. Ebbesmeyer, um, how did the idea for this book come about? That's a good question. <laughs> it came about, it's just an outgrowth of who I am. It's just, the book's about a little boy who grows up to see the world in a different way, and and people always told me, well, you see the world differently. But it wasn't until I got older that I said, I think they're right. And I just kept working at oceanography, and I worked at it my own way. And then when the big container spill of Nike shoes came along, my mom said, well, that's something you should be doing. And I said, oh. And I, looked, I said, I'll look into it. And before I knew it, I was studying the world of flotsam, which turned out to be virtually an undiscovered world on our planet, what actually floats on the surface of the ocean it's been undiscovered. So I entered that world and after 20 years, uh, well, my agent, Elizabeth Wales, came along and said, uh, I was on a radio program and she stopped by the freeway and said, oh, he should write a book. And she called me. <laughs> and so basically because of that radio program and just kind of what I do, go around and talk about flotsam, uh, the book evolved. So it's just an evolution of a life. So what exactly is flotsymmetrics? Flotsymmetrics is a term that Jim Ingram and I coined 20 years ago. It's about, it's the metrics of everything that floats. It's just trying to understand what floats on the surface, which has not really been done before. So my view is everything that floats on the ocean has a story to tell. It just happens to be deaf and mute. So you have to strangle this little neck to get its story out. <laughs> I um, Before I read the book, I'd really never heard about slabs and snarks. Um, what are those and, and what sort of a role do they play in your understanding of the ocean? Well, you start with the big picture. Uh, if you look at the world from like 35,000 feet up, it looks like a smooth, nice ocean. And when you start getting down to the sea surface where this little duck is, this is the real sea surface, and you start actually swimming in it, you find that the ocean is not not smooth. It's actually made up of lots of chunks and the chunks are like 30 miles across and maybe 200 feet deep. When you're standing on the shore you often feel different temperatures go by. If you're standing in a lake or uh, the shore you'll see that you'll feel different temperatures go by. Those are snarks, chunks of water drifting by you. And um, the whole world is actually a pointless drawing. If you, like a Surat painting, when you get up close, you see all the little dots. When you get up close to the ocean, you see that the ocean is made of millions and millions of little pieces of water that are typically 10, 20, 100 miles across and maybe 500 feet thick. So they're really, they're really long and thin, about a page thick. So they're really long, but that's the way the ocean is. And I call them starks because I first started hunting them in uh, 1967, and they're really they're very elusive, and I wanted to follow one. And my grad, my my old advisor uh, Cliff Barnes said uh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. So uh, I had to schedule a boat, and I actually found I actually went out and, and surprised him. I followed one for a weekend, <laughs> 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 and so I named them after Lewis Carroll, so hunting of the snark. Um, you also write a lot about gyres. What what exactly is a gyre? It's a, a gyre is a circle of current. In, in this book, a gyre is uh, a circle of current that runs between continents. It's like a snake holding its tail, and the currents go all the way around from one continent across the ocean and back. And those are typically five, ten thousand miles in circuit. And it might take um, two to ten, two to twenty years to go around once. The, the, the time it takes to go around that circuit, that, that gyre, is the orbital period. And that is undiscovered on this planet. And I just tried to, for the first time, put them all together and say, here are the orbital periods that are fundamental to our planet. 
You publish a newsletter, Beachcombers Alert. How did that get started, and, and sort of what role does that play in your understanding of, of the ocean? Well, the Beachcomber Alert is a newsletter. It comes out quarterly, and it's basically stories that are sent to me by beachcombers. It started as a result of the Nike shoe spill in 1990. 80,000 Nikes were spilled overboard from a container ship in five containers. And then in 1992, we had 29,000 turtles, ducks, beavers, and frogs spilled overboard in roughly the same area. In 1994, we had uh, 34,000 hockey gloves spilled overboard. And my dad, who had Parkinson's at the time, and mom lived just a few blocks north, and I'd have lunch with them several times a week. And after a while, these so many stories were developing, my dad said, you know, you guys need a newsletter. And I said, this is 1996. He said, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Jim's, uh, Jim White, my dad's therapist, said, well, I can lay it out in PageMaker. And Mom had made sandwiches for us and said, well, if you lay it out, uh, I'll do the mailing list. Before I knew it, I was in a corner. I said, all right, I'll do the newsletter. <laughs> and that was 1996. Dad died in July of 96, and he never got to see the first newsletter. So uh, it's been going ever since. I think we're in our 55th issue. And basically, people from all over the world find something and report in. I put it into a newsletter, mail it out by snail mail, and here we are, 1996 to 2009, so we're at 14th year. What would you say is your greatest concern about the oceans today? I'd have to say that we're infecting the ocean with plastic. Plastic is not biodegradable. I was just on a boardwalk and it says the biodegradation of plastic. Well. Plastic doesn't biodegrade it. It partitions, it fractures into ever smaller pieces, down to molecules, but there's nothing on the planet that really can digest those molecules. And some plastic floats and some sinks, so the whole body of the ocean is infected with microscopic plastic, which gets into the food chain, is in, is in all the food that comes out of the ocean. So I'm afraid that the ocean has um, been infected. Do you have any words of wisdom or words of encouragement for students who might be considering oceanography uh, as a field of study? I would say that the surface of the ocean as well as many other aspects are virtually unexplored. The ocean, we know the ocean pro more poorly I think than the surface of the moon. I would say go after something you love to do and follow it. But you better be something you love to do. It can't just be a job, or else it will wind up killing you. But if you love to do it, then you'll find a life's passion. With respect to flotsometrics, how can, how can ordinary people, beachcombers, people that love the ocean, how can they contribute to our knowledge of the oceans? Carry a camera, carry a notebook. Whenever you're walking along the beach, you see something unusual, something that catches your eye, take a picture of it, take a note, and then let me know, and I'll report it out in the Beachcomber Alert. Um, follow it up. Um, simple things. Um, we were watching, walking along the beach uh, yesterday, and we saw this buoy. It's been in the newspaper, but it's, it's just a piece of flotsam that has a big chain on it. It's like a 20, 30 foot long tank, and it's, it's just anchored out there because the chain is dragging the bottom. Well, Go out there and look at it. Take the numbers down and figure out where it came from. That's really important. We know virtually nothing about where the junk on our beach comes from. So it's very simple. It's just basically gumshoe detective work. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Dr. Ebbesmeyer. I've learned a lot and uh, enjoyed your book. Thanks, David. It's been a real pleasure.